So let's talk about AREDS. We've all heard about AREDS. Uh, the AREDS was really a pivotal landmark clinical trial that showed for the first time ever that macular degeneration could be slowed down by a formulation of vitamins. AREDS was a government-sponsored study. It cost about $26 million of our money, and it ran for approximately 10 years. And I'd like to talk about this because there seems to be some misconception in uh, the interpretation of the AREDS results. So it's important to know that AREDS really looked at four categories of patients. There were patients with no macular degeneration, few of any drusen, those were category one. There were patients who had just a little bit of macular degeneration, those were category two. We know that there were those people who had severe macular degeneration, moderate to severe, and that was category three. And then there was category four. Category four were those who were already blind in one eye, had wet macular degeneration in an eye, um, those that we really had to con be concerned about. So let's just review again. Category one were those with few to no drusen, essentially a healthy retina. Category two, those with maybe just some early small intermediate drusen. Category three, you see here large, soft, mottled drusen, intermediate AMD. And then category four, if you had wet in one eye or you were already blind in one eye or central geographic atrophy in one eye, really essentially if you were monocular. Let's look at the vitamins that were chosen in the AREDS trial. Vitamin C was about 500 milligrams in the trial. Vitamin E was 400 international units. Beta carotene was 15 milligrams. Zinc was 80 milligrams. And copper was in there to prevent some anemia associated with using zinc. And I'll tell you, we were all shocked by the results of this trial. I don't think anybody in my field thought that there would be such a reduction by taking a vitamin uh, formulation. The results show that there was about a 20 to 25 percent reduction in the conversion from dry macular to wet macular by about five years. And also it's important to note that in this trial about 80 percent of people continued to take their Centrum Silver. So my patients always ask, do I take my regular multivitamin? And the answer is yes, if they want. But one of the misconceptions about this trial was that you should only put somebody on an AREDS formulation if they were in moderate to advanced AMD, because there was no benefit seen in category one or two. But this is where it gets a little cloudy. There was no benefit seen in category one or two. But let's remember, category one, one was people with no macular degeneration, and category two was very early. In fact, the studies show that the rate of progression over five years in category one or two going to category three or four was only 1.3%. So what that tells you is, one, this study was never designed to, see, to, to, to determine whether there was a preventative benefit in people with early macular degeneration. It was never powered to detect that. It would have had to go on for 40 years, and it would have cost $200 million in order to show that there was a preventative effect. And I can tell you right now, there's no plans in the works for a trial like that. People with early macular degeneration just don't progress that fast. But one can extrapolate that if it's good for you in the later stages, it's good for you in the earlier stages. And I simply kind of tell my patients this. There's no study that shows that running a mile a day is good for your heart or make you live longer. But we know intuitively that exercise is good for your heart, and it's the same with vitamins. If it's good for you in the later stages and can slow down the progression, it's good for you in the earlier stages. Let's talk about some of the other nutritional therapies that are out there. There's been a lot that's come around since the AREDS trial, and most importantly, the carotenoids called lutein and zeaxanthine. Lutein and zeaxanthine are macular pigments. And what's interesting is the researchers at the National Eye Institute, when they designed AREDS-1, wanted lutein and zeaxanthine in the original formula. The problem was these products were not available in a pill form. The technology wasn't there. So they selected a different carotenoid. That carotenoid was beta carotene, and it probably was a poor choice, but it was the best that they had at the time. Why are lutein and zeaxanthine good? Well, we know that it is lower in patients with AMD. We know that supplements can cause the macular pigments to reaccumulate, and we know that people with higher levels of lutein and zeaxanthine pigments have less macular degeneration. And this really brings us to AREDS2. AREDS2 is the new study that is going to help answer some of these questions that we have about AREDS1. It is a randomized multi-center trial that is currently ongoing, also against uh, uh, 
set up by the National Eye Institute in a government-funded study, and it is at a cost of tens of millions of dollars. So let's look at the science behind AREDS2 and why there was a need for AREDS2. Well, we talked briefly that beta-carotene probably wasn't the best choice. Uh, since AREDS1, there's been a number of studies that have shown that there are limitations with beta-carotene. The CARED study was a 14,000 study, uh, member study of heavy smokers, and it showed that if you took beta-carotene, there was a 24% increase in lung cancer. There was a 17% increase in mortality. It doesn't seem to affect the retina in a pill form, and so it really has no benefit in being uh, in an eye pill. Beta-carotene is best when it comes from your diet. Let's talk about zinc. Zinc has always been controversial in the AREDS formulation. I think the original AREDS uh, researchers felt that this controversy and weren't sure exactly how to tackle this, but they probably chose a level that was too high. 80 milligrams is what is in the original AREDS, and that is nine times the recommended daily allowance in women. It is six times the recommended daily allowance in men. It's been linked with urinary complications. It's been linked with neurotoxicity. It's been linked with beta amyloid plaques, which are the precursor lesions in Alzheimer's disease. So you have a population that's already at risk for Alzheimer's, and you give them 80 milligrams of zinc, you could be pushing them over the edge. And then there's also a thought that, one, you could only absorb maybe 25 milligrams at max. The last thing is omega-3. I think since the original AREDS trial, we've learned that probably if there's one panacea in ocular nutrition or maybe uh, nutritional supplements in general, it is omega-3. Omega-3s have a role in just about every part of ocular visual transduction. It works in the lipids, it helps the pigments, it helps the transduction, and it has anti-angiogenic properties. In about six or seven studies, we have already shown that there is a reduction in the progression and severity of macular degeneration. So omega-3 is so important. This is the best way I can explain AREDS1 and AREDS2. Probably, you know, AREDS1 concluded in early 2000, but it really was something that was designed in the 90s, and all of us remember our cell phones from the days past, and now we know where we are with our iPhones, and this is really the difference. The technology has just changed. So AREDS2 is ongoing. Uh, it completed enrollment in 2008. We should have the first answers in the next couple of years. It's 4,000 patients, and it looked at a lot of different things to help answer some questions. I get patients who ask, well, why? when are we going to see a study that shows that bilberry or grapeseed extract is uh, slows macular degeneration? And the answer is you may never. Just to answer the questions of AREDS2, it takes seven different subsets of patients. To answer whether beta-carotene is effective or not is two subsets. To look at whether low zinc is effective as high zinc is another couple subsets. Lutein, zeaxanthin, one with omega-3, you see how it gets very complicated. In this trial, there's AREDS with less beta with, with beta carotene, there's AREDS with no beta carotene, there's AREDS with no beta carotene and low zinc, there's AREDS with low zinc, there's lutein and zeaxanthin, there's omega-3, and then all of them combined. So you see how it gets complicated, and it limits our ability to look at every product out there that we know could benefit the eye. I'll tell you one thing that did come out of this trial uh, so far, the research in setting it up, is that lutein by itself is probably just not that effective. Lutein should be combined with a product called zeaxanthin, which are, is another macular pigment. And the researchers at the NEI chose a ratio of 5 to 1. That's 10 milligrams of lutein to 2 milligrams of zeaxanthin. And what I find frustrating out there is there's just a lot of products that don't have this ratio or only have lutein by itself. But let's go a little bit beyond even AREDS2. If I was to design an ocular supplement that was ideal, what would we want in it? And the fact is there are some other components. Vitamin B6, folate, and B12 was just shown to be in a study, the Archives of Internal Medicine, 2009, February. They looked at 5,000 women over the age of 40, and they found that there was a 41% reduction in the development of macular degeneration by being on these supplements. Now, this was not a prospective trial, but it does show, and it contributes to the literature, that there is a role of prevention in macular degeneration. What about alpha-lipolic acid? It is a universal antioxidant. It works, works synergistically with vitamin C and glutathione. Selenium is great for the eye. Grapeseed extract is a powerful antioxidant. It strengthens blood vessels, improves circulation, and reduces arterial sclerosis. Glutathione studies have already shown a positive benefit when um, looked at with macular degeneration. 
And then there's bilberry. Bilberry is a really interesting substance. It was first used in World War II by the French pilots. It helped them see better at night. It's a potent antioxidant. It strengthens capillary walls, and it works synergistically with lutein and zeaxanthin. So beyond AREDS2, 